G'day guys and welcome to me lab and this is our 11th episode in our Wolfenstein 3D cloning Godot 4. What we're getting up to today, well BJ Bukowski is the face behind the gun in Wolfenstein 3D and we're going to be getting his animated face onto our HUD as well as dealing with player lives and things like that. So let's uh, have a quick recap of where we're up to and then we will jump into our WWSS. We should have most of our basic gameplay all sorted really. We've got player, enemies, world, combat, death, collectibles. So we're just going to start really refining things from here on out so let's have a quick look at what the game looks like now and then we'll go through our wws well first things first let's see what it should be looking like if we've kept up so far well ideally yours is going to look better than mine um, you should be able to shoot your nazis they should die your ammo goes down your health would go down too if i let them get near enough to me um, you can pick up ammo satchels which then adds to your ammo um, yeah i think it's looking pretty good so far but we've got a little bit more to do today so what are we doing in this lesson? We are adding uh, the damage animation to our head-up display, as well as the logic for our player lives. Why are we doing this? Well, to make the game more engaging and also to be able to manipulate player difficulty in different ways. The skills you will need today, we're gonna need to be able to understand and apply how to create animations and edit scripts. And your success today will look like you having uh, the player's face in the HUD with relevant animations for their level of health. Um, and your player will also have three lives also displayed in our hut. Before we jump into the tutorial, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, why don't you give the channel a subscribe? I'm just going to interrupt myself here with a bit of a disclaimer. You see, I wear a lot of hats. I'm a teacher, I'm an educational neuroscientist, I'm a Godot dev, I'm a musician, I'm a terrible inventor of useless garbage, and all of those things are covered here on this channel. And I hope that you're keen to join me on that journey so we can all uh, grow more awesome together. But if you are laser focused on a particular topic like Godot, I don't want to mislead you and you get annoyed that I'm doing a lot of non-Godot stuff. So everything's divided into playlists to make life a bit easier for you. You. So only subscribe if you really want that full experience of uh, all the different learning. Uh, otherwise, just follow the right playlist for you. All right, let's get back to the video. The channel a subscribe um, and you can stay up to date with everything that we're doing. All righty, well, I think a great place to start will be our global script. So let's jump in there. So jump into your script view, find your global script, and then we're going to add a new variable var lives equals three. I think that one's pretty self-explanatory what we're trying to do there. All right, after we have got our lives put in there, let's jump into our UI view. So not just our script, but also our 2D view of our UI. So this is what we've got at the moment. We've got our weapon in the middle there. We've got those labels that we made uh, last week and the week before. So our health shows up, our ammo shows up. We're just basically gonna add lives along with that as well as a new animated sprite. So let's start off by copying a few things to make life easier find your health label right click duplicate or command d find the label uh, like label 2 whatever right click duplicate now let's rename health 2 to be lives in caps um, and label 3 can stay being called label 3 but what we want to do is click on label 3 jump across to our inspector and where it says ammo let's change that so it says lives as well now we can start moving a few things around so here is our lives label if I remember correctly lives shows up to the left of the face so the face will be there under the weapon and then sort of lives after that so let's get our guides in place um, and where is our actual lives box there it is there so let's grab that one across and relocate our guides for that one too. Now, chances are, I'm not doing a very good job of lining everything up. That's uh, that's what you guys can do in your own time. I'm not worried about getting everything spot on and perfect. I'm trying to just convey the general ideas. So we've now got a lives uh, label and a label there that we can update in the code to show how many lives we've got. So why don't we do that first? Okay, let's go back to our script. Let's go to our UI and then let's do a little bit of duplicating effectively. So here are some functions we made before, right? Update health label, update ammo label. We're going to do the lives the same way, yeah? So let's just copy this one here. Um, we're going to copy the ammo one because our lives one is almost exactly the same. Paste that in and instead of update ammo label, we're going to update lives label. Instead of ammo, it's going to be lives. Or if you recall, we can delete that and then we can just grab the lives node and drag it in. Um, so lives.txt, and then instead of global.ammo, it's going to be global.lives. Ooh, get rid of those caps, Andrew. There we go. All right, 
that's our um, UI live stuff sorted out. Let's give it a test to make sure it works. So remember, we haven't done any logic. If we uh, die, no lives disappear, but we just want to make sure the label and all that works. All right. Ah, uh, it does not. Do you know why? I know why. Because I rushed ahead. Uh, there was one thing we also needed to do. We've got to actually call the function. So update uh, lives label. Just add that in near where you've got the health and the ammo ones there like that. Let's save and run it again and it should be fine this time. <gasps> there it is. Too easy. All right. Let's close that down. Time to, I think, let's skip across and start working on our uh, BJ Blazkowski's face um, animation thing. So let's again go to our 2D view of our UI. So the spot we're going to put, it's in here, right? The way we're going to actually um, work it is we're going to come back to our UI, click on the root node, click on the plus, and we are going to look for an animated sprite 2D again. We're going to use another animated sprite 2D, but we're going to rename this one so that we don't get confused. Let's rename it to BJ. That's his name after all. Um, and then we want to set up the animation. So if you recall how to do this, we haven't done much of it in, uh, in this particular tutorial series. We're going to come across to our inspector, find where it says animation. Then where we've got sprite frames empty, click on the empty, click on new sprite frames, which is the first little drop down there, and then click on it again. So it just automatically opens this window at the bottom and you don't have to click on it yourself. All right. So now we've got a default um, animation. We're going to make, I think we need like seven of them. Um, and we're going to have 100, 90, and then we'll go on sort of 15, like 75, 60, 45, 30, 15 kind of thing. So let's rename our default to 100 because that is what it will be. We want that one to be our auto load and we only want three frames a second or pot potentially even less because each of our sprites, each of our animations only has three frames. All right, probably time to grab our file in. So what you're going to need is uh, in the OneNote, there is a file there called bjface.png. Um, otherwise, itch or git, you'll find it there if you follow the correct links. So where it is, where it is, where is it? There it is. Let me drop it into my file explorer there. All right. So we've got a new thing in here called BJ face to start to load those sprites. We come back into our animation thing here. We click on this little grid looking thing and then we find our new uh, sprite, which is BJ face. Now our horizontal is 21 and our vertical is one. And it may well be easier to type these in because 21 is a lot of clicking to get there. So for our 100, it's going to be our first three faces. I think that probably makes sense to everyone. So now you're probably realizing we need to make more animations. So let's go, uh, that one will be our 90 and we want it to be three frames a second. Auto, uh, sorry, looping on all of them is perfectly fine. So 100 auto load and loop three frames, 90 just loop and three frames. Um, and then we'll go down to 75, three frames. And then we're gonna have 60, three frames. Then we're going to have 45. I think you're working this out now, yeah? Probably could speed this up. Uh, and then 30. And then 15. There we go. All right. So there's them all uh, named. Now we've got to do all of the, the clicking and animating and stuff. So let's go from 90. Click on the grid. BJ face. 21. We want that to be vertical of one. Uh, 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 there we go. All right. So now we've done one, two, three. So it's going to be four, five, and six. Add. Next one, 75. Click on the grid. BJ face. 21, one. All right. So we've done one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got, so let me double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Add those. 60. Grid. BJ face, horizontal to 21, vertical to one. So we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got 10, 11, 12 next, add those. Now I think I'm actually gonna go the other way around because I'm getting sick of counting up. So let's go down to 15 and do that one next. So horizontal again, 21, vertical again is one. So this time go one, two, three, add those, uh, 30, same thing, it's incredibly repetitive, but you know what? We're learning as we're going, and the more you repeat it, the more you're going to remember it. One, two, three, there we go. And what have we got left? 45, is that the last one? 21, one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there. 
is our last three and I think that's all of them yep excellent so we've done all of our animations now we've got to make all of this guff work so um, let's grab our face and drag it down to where we want it to be so in your 2d view when we add a new animation or whatever it generally um, appears at the zero point so you're just going to need to grab it drag it down and let's just resize it so it's sort of taking up that space we want it to take up oh, it's maybe a bit too big um, and what I'm going to want to do here is actually get those sprite frames back up because I want this one to be on the screen to start with, not the almost dead one. Um, what do we think? I reckon that looks okay. I think it might need to come over a bit like that because I think the mini gun is a bit wider. All right, let's save that and let's just make sure it appears before we worry about animating. Let's have a look. Yeah. There he is. All right, so now what we're going to need to do is do all the logic so that um, that face changes, right? So let's close that down there and let's grab our script because that's where we're going to be working. So those are the things we've just done there, update lives. We're going to be adding in like a whole nother function here now pretty much, guys. So let me just grab it from this side because uh, I don't want to keep you waiting and watching me typing indefinitely. Okay, so just down the bottom of our UI um, script, let's paste in a new function. So let's talk this one through. So this whole thing is just being pasted at the very end so you don't get lost. All right, so we've got function update face animation and we're passing in the health there. So our animation name is we're just creating that variable there so we can um, use these strings here. Um, if health is greater than 90, use animation 100. That's all pretty logical, right? You can work that out as we go through. So that all matches the names of the animations we created, um, 190, 75, etc. Down here, bj.play animation name. This is our name. So we're just saying update face animation is gonna be play the uh, appropriate animation ad as according to what we've just calculated here. So if our health is above 90, we're gonna play the 100 one. So BJ play 100. If it is down here and it's, oh, your health is uh, greater than 45, but less than 60, then we're gonna play the 60 one. I think that all makes pretty good sense, right? So let's save that. Let's find out if that works, shall we? Actually, you know what? It's not gonna work because I forgot to put the call to the function in there. Okay. Let's uh, go back and add that in as well, because that seems to be what I do these days, is just leave out the odd thing that completely ruins it. All right, so we need to, just like we did with the update health and update ammo and all of that stuff, we need to add in another little call here, update face animation, and we're gonna get parent player health. And the reason we can do get parent is because our UI um, scene is a child of our player scene in the actual world so that way the parent of the ui scene is the player so we can grab the player's health out of there like this if we put our player's health as a global variable we wouldn't need to do it this way we could go update face animation global dot health or something like that but this works as well and there's various ways you can do things it's good to try different um different ways all right that's that one let's see if it works now see if i've forgotten anything else so once we start getting shot at, I'll go closer to them to help out. There we go, you can see it working. We're getting deader and deader. Excellent. Okay, so we've now probably got to move on to doing our lives logic, and that's largely gonna happen in our player script. So let's find our player script, and let's go down and have a look at our damage function, because that's where we're gonna basically be doing all of our work here. So with our um, player script, that's where we're handling health, and so that's where we also do our damage and stuff. So this is where we're gonna focus our attention. Um, I guess we can just get straight into it. So our player health, so let's go through the function first so we understand it before we change it. So when we call this damage function, we want to take away 10 from the player's health. Player's health is a variable up the top here, right? Player health int 100. So we want to take 10 away from that. This statement here just prints it down here that you can actually see in my um, output, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40. That's just so I can make sure everything's working. You don't even need that line there, but it's helpful to have these debug statements. All right, after we've printed that, we go, if our player's health is less than or equal to zero, then delete our player from the scene, they're dead. Well, that's not the case anymore. We've now got three lives. So we need to work in a little bit of logic so that those lives work. So that's all fine up to that point but we want to add in another step here. So if global ugh, global lives is less than or equal to one, then we want to queue free. Else, 
we then want to say, all right, global.lives, we want to actually, well, take one away. It's going to take one away from there. And then we're going to do this here. So get tree. So what we're working on here is actually making it so that we can, oh, hang on, I need, let me just fix that. All right, I needed to tab that across. Um, what we're doing here is working out how to uh, go back to the start of the game, essentially. So we're going to go change scene to file, perfect. And then the file we want is our world scene. So I'm just going to grab the world, drag it over and drop it in between the brackets. It adds in that path there. So now I've got get tree, change scene to file, world.scene. So what we're saying is if we read the whole function through, Take away 10 from our player's health, um, print whatever that is in our output. If our player's health is now zero or less um, and they have one life, then queue free. Otherwise, take one life away and start the game again. So that's the logic there. Let's see if it works, see if I've forgotten anything else this time. So let's jump in, hit play and run over here and see what happens. Ooh, that didn't work at all. I think there's a typo in here. Let's have a closer look. All right, so let me have another look here. We've got, if our player health is less than or equal to 10, that's good. Print, yep, that's fine. If player health is less than or equal to zero, that's good. If our global lives is less than or equal to one, Q3, else, <gasps> I know what it is. As always with me, I get tiny little syntax errors and they ruin everything. All right, we just had these tabs in the wrong spot. We've moved our else, our global lives and our tree over. Let's save that, run it again. And hopefully we don't die after one bullet this time. Oh good, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and lives goes down to two. We need to just keep killing ourselves to make sure it stops after one. And here we go, Q3. Brilliant! Our entire game is working exactly as we intended. So let's go look at our must, our may, and our might. What must you get done? Well, you're going to need to update that hardware UI scene um, with the, the relevant new, uh, new parts. You're going to need to update the script for it as well. Um, you're also going to need to update the player script to handle some of that logic around uh, lives and the global script to give our player lives. So those are all musts. We've got to get those done to make sure that we're keeping up. What you may like to do is start a new scene that's going to act as your level two because we're going to get going to get to that eventually um, and what you might consider doing is thinking how you're going to get your level displayed in the HUD um, so we're going to add that as well because that's one of the features and there's also scoring and things we're going to add in too but have a think about how you might do that next step and get the level recorded in the HUD so if you've got all of that done you should now have a Wolfenstein clone that allows you to fight with guards collect ammo kill and be killed whilst exploring your Nazi castle your player has three lives they've got a HUD that shows the health in percentage as as well as the animation. Um, all that info is there now with your ammo and all that too. Next time, well, we'll finish off work uh, working on our HUD in a few other ways, and we're also gonna have a look at how do we transition to the next level. And the quote I wanna leave you with this lesson is one that I do not uh, follow nearly as well as I should, and it's from Mark Twain. And he once said, it is better to keep your mouth closed and let people think you are a fool than open it and remove all doubt. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.